Hello guys, here we are back with, back with the uh, Sea King and this is part 16 now and as you can see I've given it a, I actually used LP23 which is a flat uh, clear coat, flat varnish but um, I've uh, I've always found in the past that it does leave, as you can see, it does leave a very slight sheen which is what I'm looking for. So what have we got to do now? We've got to unmask it, which everybody loves. And hopefully you've seen part 15 and by now, well, no, but not by now, because it isn't even out yet. I'll know what color that could be, but I could paint that at any time. So that's, that's not a problem. Um, so basically we're, we're, what we've got to do now is unmask it. And then we're going to do some weathering. Yes, we're going to weather after it's unmasked because the glass gets weathered too. Um, and then we're going to um, add the antenna from here to here to here and then I believe it's done I think there may be some antenna wires that go into the fuselage as well at certain places but um, we shall see what's something there that's bothering me not quite sure what that is there's a little white spot something stuck under the lacquer I expect there's another one there look obviously there was something in the airbrush when I was doing this now, I, I'm going to tell you a story. Um, I was messing around with some chrome paints the other day, and one of them, I tried the old Viejo chrome. So I tried that in my airbrush, and it just turned into cottage cheese. And I soaked the airbrush time and time again to clear it out, and this is probably what this is. That that Viejo chrome has now gone in the bin. Um, sort of Viejo chrome. Absolute, utter junk. So um, that's gone in the bin. Um, the, the finish of it is just absolutely dire I won't bother showing you because it's, it's over there but I was going to make a video about it and I just gave up in the end but um yeah absolutely awful so I'll have to touch those bits in that bit there doesn't matter because it'll be covered up by the intake cover but um everything else I think she's looking really really nice um I think the red is perfect that Ferrari red it's a LP21 Italian red so right what we're going to do now is get a mask and what I'm going to use for this to prevent doing any scratching I'm going to take a cocktail stick I'll take the bluntest end which is this end and we'll just give it a bit of a, a sharp edge just like a sort of chisel edge just like so and that will allow us to get up under the tape so I'm going to do this on camera because everybody loves to see an unmasking so we've got the got our actually large piece of masking tape there if we do have any overspray in here I'll come in afterwards with a cotton bud and some leveling thinners and remove it because remember we tinted this but we tinted it all on the inside so that's okay so that's looking good so now we can get under the get under the corner if you've seen my review of the aftermarket set the engine set for the half track you will see in there that I mentioned um, about the uh, the noise from my computer I've now ordered a new motor it's the fan on the um, graphics card that's gone so rather than buy a new graphics card I found the motor from a Chinese supplier this is all made in China as we know and um, basically ordered that so 21 quid so that's on its way so we can fit that and we'll be happy so as you can see here I've masked this with little thin strips rather than trying to cut around it I don't remember now if I showed you this or not it was ages ago I masked this now what we can do with a cocktail stick if we've got any little bits like there there's a bit of paint just come under the tape can use the sharp end of a cocktail stick to remove it and you can see there you get pretty much perfect masking it looks like there's a little bit weak there creep there okay and then we could come in with a nice soft Johnson's cotton bud and just wipe over and there we go so here again this one has been done in one piece by the look of it so we're going to get under there if we can it's very well sealed in there we go you can see now why I'm using wood because it would be so easy to scratch these clear parts with a metal tool so we can see there we've got a little bit of seepage under there and I'm going to use a wash here because basically that there is a seam and I haven't glued it 
so we've got paint that's capillaried in so if I put a wash in there it should cover that up I'm surprised it hasn't covered up where I did my um I wonder if that is actually on the surface no it does appear that it's gone down in between I'm surprised the uh, black magic marker hasn't covered it up yeah I need I need to put a sharper point on here I think So here we go. Get under the nope, that's really I'm really struggling to get under it. I'm gonna to have to use a knife. Be extremely careful. I'm gonna do this off camera guys. I'll I'll pick on the easier ones on the top. We'll see now how this um how this tinted glass looks. But I'm gonna to have to do the others off camera. I'm gonna to have to run under a magnifier and pick at them with the my little special anise tweezers. Because they are awesome for stuff like this. But I don't want to, just for the sake of filming it, I don't want to risk scratching my clear parts. That's one of the problems with people will tell you, and any creator will tell you, when you're making a video, you can't get in like you can when you're actually, um, you know, through your magnifier or whatever. I see some people's at work is absolutely amazing. They get in with a, you know, they're in there. They've got the camera sort of really close up and it's very, very clever what they do. No, uh, I really should try and get that. But there we go. That's um, that's looking good. I'm, I can't believe I haven't got any paint creeped under there. Because the front edge of this has been lifting ever since I put it on. Under there, the other thing we've got to be careful of is not to scratch the grey paint off the clear on the frames because that will probably scratch off quite easily as well. There we go, we've got another piece of tape under there. Obviously, I doubled up. I can grab that end of it there. Look, there we go, just clean up the edge, and we have. As you can see, some very nice clean masking. I have got fogging on there by the look of it. I think I've got some overspray got underneath there. That's okay. And there we are. So you can see they're lovely clean. You know, you can do masking without a masking set. It's not masking sets aren't imperative, but uh they do have to make life a lot easier. If they're any good, I mean, if you get, I'm not going to mention any names, but you get certain masking sets. You guys will probably remember I had one on here and ended up throwing it across the table. And uh, it wasn't ASK <clears throat> or Edward, I can tell you that. The ASK masking sets are bloody awesome. I recommend them to anyone. But uh, I expect by now Peter's got a set for this model. So there we go, a bit of a clean up required on the front there. You can see we've got some residue remaining from the glue. We've got, there's probably a little bit of overspray. So what I'll do is I will get a small cotton bud. In fact, I'm going to get one of my little... Okay, so these are the Anise Precision Cotton Swabs. They're absolutely brilliant. Obviously this is type one with the point. You can see compared to a normal cotton bud, they're a lot smaller. But these things are absolutely awesome. Um, I can get in here, this is IPA, isopropyl alcohol, you can use Tamiya thinners, you can use leveling thinners but just be a little bit careful because leveling thinners is a bit hotter than um, IPA and stuff. And what we're going to do is just, I'm not even sure if you can see it, I, I can catch it in the light but there's right here right in the corners, I'm not sure if it's paint got in there or what, um, you can see there's like a deposit on there so I'm going to get in here with a drop of IPA, I think it's um residue from the tape. But the beauty of this you see I can get in and not remove any paint from the frame and this is also why I actually painted the smoke on the inside. I think my bud's dried out. That's clearly residue from the tape because it's smearing around. It's gooey. It's not like a... it's not like paint. 
yeah, there's a lot of residue on there actually from the tape. So what I'm going to do is get this cotton bud in the IPA and then we'll get it on a piece of paper towel. Just remove most of it. And we can just rub over the clear part, staying away from the edges because remember you'll take the paint off the frame as well. Let's just rub over there. Just like so and then deposit some of this onto this one here which will soak that up and then we should be able to get into the corners just like so I think it's also very static there we are so you can see now we've got lovely clear parts all smoked and everything on the top these aren't smoked here but they are on the top so you can see when you look through there, the very dark, whereas when you look through there, it's not so dark. So I'm going to get the rest of this done off camera and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. We'll do the side windows on camera because they're going to be exciting to see how much mess I made of those frames. All right, so you can see now the, the canopy's all looking nice. I must say I'm very impressed with how that's come out. Um, you know, I, it, one of my least preferred jobs is masking and masking clear parts. And I'm really happy with how that's come out. I'm going to have to get some more IPA and get rid of those glue marks. So you'll see me do that again. <coughs> Which is fun. So there we go. Try and get rid of those. It's just sort of smearing the glue around. This is from the Tamiya tape, so bear that in mind. I've never seen it this bad with um, with masks. So bear that in mind. There's another downside to using the Tamiya tape. We'll have to deal with that later. Right, so this one here was the biggie. This is where we've used masking tape and we've used masking fluid from VMS, which is bloody wonderful compared to some of the others. This is probably going to make a right mess because all the paint's going to flake off of here now. But as we can see it's coming away and as we can see we've made a right mess. We've got masking fluid there. So I'm going to grab my cocktail stick. We've got bits of masking fluid stuck to the edges you can see there and there's also paint layers of paint stuck on as well and it does look like here it looks like here if you can see on there looks like we have some paint which is creeped under so we're gonna grab a cotton bud again I'm using IPA because it's not so hot we'll transfer some of that onto there and then as you can see, we can easily remove the paint. Because again, I've painted on the inside. And there we go, you can see that a bulged window is stained and all clear. And good to go. little bit of paint stuck on down here which we could just scratch off with a cocktail stick and then wipe over there we go and you can see that black window frame has come out quite nice quite happy with that so we'll do this one here this one is tape rather than masking film Yeah, I think it's a double layer on the top. I was just thinking then as I was doing that. So there we go. And again, we've got that black frame. And I'm really happy with how that's come out. That black frame around the window. So uh, 
the masking's done good guys right so underneath we have masking disc there a masking disc there so we'll get that off and we'll get that one off there so we've got our lights and then there's also one here on our light there whatever it is it's probably just a downward looking light for the rescue guys I think I think that's it isn't it I think that's all the masking done There we are. There she is, naked, unmasked for the first time in weeks. Right. Weathering. So here we are then, weathering. I've done a little bit um, off camera, just a tiny little bit. And all I've done, I've come in with this wash. This is the Modeler's World Oil Wash. I believe this is no longer sold at Premium Hobbies because it was uh, becoming rather hard to get hold of. Um, but all I've done, I've gone round all the grills and stuff. And then in my little palette here, I have some odorless thinners. Um, be careful what you use. Make sure it's odorless. Don't use like turpentine and stuff because it can affect paint and certainly affect plastic. Uh, and then just wipe over, wipe over the areas to get any excess off. So as you can see, I've done a wash down here. And what I'm trying to do now is get a sort of dirty, grimy look in certain areas. So what I've done here is just put a wash down and then removed most of it with a cotton swab and I'll show you how I do this so I'm basically going to come in with some with a black wash and just brush it on where I want it to go down in areas like this okay so get, you don't want to flood it but you want to make sure you've got some on there otherwise it doesn't capillary around into the rivet holes and stuff like that so I've got that on there now and we're just going to concentrate on one little area at a time not going too mad I'm going to go over the top there and I'm going to come down here as well. I've already done this area, but I'm going to do it again. OK, and then with a cotton swab, which is just I'll, I'll use a new one so you can see how I do this. I've got a paper towel here. So I'm just going to dip that cotton bud in the just quickly into the. Uh, into the odorless thinner and then very gently wipe down where we've got the the wash and then what what that will do it remove the wash and leave it in the nooks and crannies and it'll just give like a dirty grimy look to it okay now you can if you want to you can do this with a flory wash a clay based flory wash and then remove it with water but I prefer to use oils because I find the the flory washes can be a little bit grainy um, I don't tend to use them very much if I'm honest I have got a, they're very very good and they have their uses but on something like this I don't find them amazing so there we go so you've got the you've got the sort of grimy area we can come with the dry end of the cotton bud and just dry it off a bit all we're doing is adding you can see what I mean I'm not I'm not making it really filthy I'm just just highlighting areas that would pick up grime and then when they hose the helicopter down or however they wash it it would stay in there so you can see there's actually a lot more actually a lot more um obvious on the camera than it is in real life it's really funny the camera's really picking up on it but um you can see there we have that grimy that grimy area And the more you wipe it, the more wash you take off, you can move away and it will spread the griminess. Try and keep the, um, I mean, it's not an, it, well, it is an aircraft, isn't it? But uh, it's, it's not going to have much in that way. It's all going to be sort of vertical. So try and keep your, your movements vertical. And that's all we're going to do. And then again, you know, like when this, Around this hook area here, that would pick up the dirt and grime, as would it around that one as well. Um, you can put some down in here. 
And all we're, all we're trying to do is just basically accentuate things and make them look dirty, really. Go around there. Go down there as well. Go down there, around there. And that's all I'm going to do is just areas where the dirt and grime would accumulate. And then I'm going to wipe it off with the cotton bud. And that's all I'm going to do um, in there, in there. Get some in there, we'll get some in there as well. Get some in there, some in there, some in there, some in there. And just pick up on areas where the dirt and grime would accumulate and then we can remove it with a cotton bud just like so we can take that out of there and then with the clean end and as you can see all I've done is just highlighted that little area and just made it sort of look a bit more like it's attached rather than it's just a molded on lump of plastic See, work, work that out there and then we can mop that up. All this is going to get covered in soot anyway from the airbrush. But you can see here we can we can move the oil down and dirty up that panel. Just like so. And it's 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 very subtle, but As you can see, it's very subtle, but it is there. And as you'll find with all my videos, whenever I'm doing anything like this, cotton buds are your best friend. I'm going to put some in there and in there and in there. we go so you can see that whole panel is now dirtied up a bit and the rivets are showing and this is where I did all that work around that window and that's where it's all paying off now because we've got the rivets being picked up by the wash so basically I'm going to go over the whole thing now and do that if you like just remove from excess areas and spread it around share the love There we go, I'm going to do that everywhere. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, minute. we're done with the initial sort of wash, if you like. I haven't glued that on yet. Um, I've got the door stuck back on with a bit of blue tack. And as you can see, the whole thing now has had a wash and it's all sort of streaky and dirty and stuff, which is what I want. I want it to have a grimy used look. I don't want it all glossy and new. So, um, so that's that. Now the next thing to do just to finish it off is to add some soot and maybe a bit of dust and dirt somewhere, we shall see. But um, as you can see, other than having those doors glued on, the whole thing is, is kind of done. So we're there. I've also put a wash around the window, so that makes the uh, windows look a lot better. We'll go around over the cotton bud and remove the excess on them once it's dried out. But um, yeah, very, very happy with how it's come out. Quite a grimy looking appearance, which is what I'm after. So yeah, really nice. So what I've got to do now is get some black. I managed to snap off one of the pitot tubes. I put these, but you can see that where I've actually glued it back on. That one there. But, um, that was a shame. The caught I was. I decided to, instead of using a cotton bud, I decided to use a piece of old t-shirt, and the back of the t-shirt caught in. Broke it off. So annoyed myself. But um, yeah, very annoying because I just want this thing done. I want to do something else. <laughs> um, I tend to. Uh, get a burn out at the end. So, right, what I need to do now is get some black paint in the airbrush and do some of this sooting effect that I wanted to achieve. Okay, so I've started by going in the exhaust. What I've got here is Tamiya XF1. I've used this so it's easy to remove should I want to. So this is Tamiya XF1 flat black and it is about 10% paint, 90% thinners 
and I've used Tamiya X twenty A acrylic thinners because it doesn't stink, and I'm doing it doing this out of the uh, out of the uh, booth. So um, I started to record and then stopped the camera, and deleted the film um, because when I did inside the exhaust, listen, that's a horrible noise. You don't want to hear that. So I've done inside the exhaust on both sides. So I've gone in there. So we've got the flat black in there. Now I should have got the the picture up on my on my computer, but I haven't. I need to get a picture up to see the sort of pattern that we're going to go for. Hang on a yeah, second. I found a couple of pictures. I've got one I'm looking at on the computer now. And it seems to be that you get this sort of, it sort of stays up and comes back here and goes kind of across the number. You've got to be careful because a lot of the pictures you see, I think they're shadows of the rotor blades. But um, it seems to be sort of like that going across. So we'll start up here. I'm just going to I need a piece of paper to check the airbrush isn't going to spit and spatter because that's the last thing we want. It's one of the reasons for using the XF1, it's easy to remove. So basically I'm just going to start by putting in a very faint line. So it looks like it kind of comes back like that. Okay, so there we go. And it tends to sort of go up here. But there seems to be a definite sort of a definite thickness here. It tends to be sort of very black here. I think you've got the forward motion of the helicopter blowing the gases back, the actual speed of the gases themselves coming out, and also the downward force of the, the rotor blades. So I think that's looking quite good. Just going to bring it down a bit there. Right, so let's, let's kind of try doing some single lines there rather than... Carry it back. This still tends to be all dirty around here. All the soot builds up. I'm guessing if I put the airbrush in the kind of direction of flow, we will get the We'll get the sort of direction that we're looking for. It's very difficult this, I must be honest. I think it's one of those things if you don't do enough it's not going to look right but you could very easily overdo it. You can see now why I've got that door closed it's so that we can achieve the, the sooty look on the door because it would probably be closed 90% of the time. I'm happy with that. See how it's sort of spreading out and it's catching on the forward of that radome there. And then obviously because of the radius of the fuselage it's kind of being blown down and just disappearing. So I'm I'm more than happy with that. But believe me, the camera is making that look a lot. The camera always lies, I tell you. It's on the camera, I'm looking at the camera, and that looks like a thick black streak going down, but it's not at all. I can actually see the grey paint through it. So um it's nothing like it's looking on the camera, I can assure you. So you just got to try and achieve the same now on the other side. So we're going to go from there, we're going to go straight down like that. Yeah, and we're going to come up. I'll try and cover up that mess of a made of that decal as well, don't I? That's going to come down on that angle there. I'm going to try and keep the airbrush in the sort of direction. And that way we'll blow some soot onto the front of that radome. There we go, that's how to do it. A little bit more because we need it sort of evenly matched on both sides. There we are, it's nice and even. I think it needs to be slightly darker down here. I 
makes life very easy this actually because if it was a second rubber aircraft it'd be all sorts of whites and tan colours and all that in there this is just black soot so it makes it easy right so I've just noticed I haven't put any wash on here either I need to get that sorted so we used hardly any paint at all I seem to remember seeing pictures of them being more sort of grimy down the sides. I'm going to have. I'm going to come down a bit more on here. We remember, when the door's open now, we're going to see a, a bright line around the. See there, we're going to see that nice line. So the door will be like that with this dirty bit here. I'm gonna have a nice clean line there where the door's been shut. So uh, that'll look quite good. So there we go. In fact, what I think I'll do is just put a tiny bit here because they do some of their work with the door open, don't they, of course? But it would be mainly with the door closed. So it would be slightly tarnished, but not as much as the rest. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. So there we go. Other than putting that wash on there, adding the antenna and perhaps some dust, I think we're pretty much done. Right, I'm going to clean the airbrush out and uh, we'll do a bit of dust, I think. Okay, so this is something I've learned off of Wes Shell over on the uh, A20 Facebook group. And it's something he does and I've never tried it. I'm going to give it a go on here. This is a very, very this is like... 2% paint and 98% thinner and this is um, XF55 deck tan and what I'm going to do is just add a very very light layer of dust to the top of the model and this is something he does with his aircraft and I just want to see how it looks He says it flattens everything back and it brings everything uniform. And I can see what he means. It's a very, very subtle effect. You can hardly, I doubt you can even see it on the camera. But it is very, very subtle. Let's do it over the top of these sponsons as well. Just, I can see exactly what it means. It looks absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Wes. Just, I can see exactly what he means. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to do it on all my models in the future. I mean, you can see how watery it is. There's nothing to it. I mean, if I spray it on here, you can see there's hardly anything there at all. If I dry it back, there's hardly anything there at all. And it's just enough just to... It's just sort of... Do you know, it's just making the top look bleached. It's exactly the effect I've seen on so many models before and wondered how they've achieved it. And it's exactly the look I'm looking for. That is brilliant. I can imagine it'd be very easy to overdo it. But um, thank you, Wes. Brilliant. I'll give you a shout out or I'll give you a thank you on the... Um, Facebook page in case you don't look at this because this probably isn't your thing but um if you're not on the Facebook page go and have a look it's the um H HK models a20 um havoc uh, build group not group build build group um have a look on there and you'll see Wes is one of the first to finish and his model's beautiful and uh he follows me and says nice things about me and stuff so I'm doing the same about him and as I say when, when I use a technique on my channel that I've got from someone else I will always you know shout them out um not everyone does it's a shame I watch some channels and it's like they've been watching me for a couple of years and they just do everything exactly the same as I do and uh but um many people do shout out such as uh Zinzan and that but um some don't anyway yeah 
Really liking that. Right, let's get our antenna wire on there now and then we can start looking at getting those doors fitted and everything. Right, so before we go any further, I need to get these bits glued on. Now for this, I'm tempted to use double-sided tape. I'm going to see how it goes. So I'm going to get a bit of this double-sided tape. So we cut it off of here. Just like so. And that's a little bit too wide, so I'm just going to Cut a little bit off the length. <clears throat> stick that down over there out of the way. And then I'm going to stick this onto the bottom of here. Like so. There we go. In fact, I'm just going to have a narrower piece in the middle actually because we don't want to see it sticking on the ends do we so we'll just have a piece in the middle just like so and I think this will be enough to hold it in place because after all we're not going to be picking it up and playing with it are we we're not going to be taking it to shows although saying that I am tempted to give this to the place that Airfix went to to launch this kit so we shall see. So what we can do now is position this roughly in place. Get it so that it's about in the middle. I think that's about in the middle. And then just give it a little squeeze. And that's not going anywhere. So that's the best way to do that. Now with these doors, this one here I'm going to remove Where's my radius blade? I'm going to remove some paint from here, get back to the plastic. And the same down here. Just like so. And then I am going to look at how that goes. I'm going to put some accelerator on here and I'm going to put some glue on the door. I'm using the VMS Black Thin. The reason I use the accelerator, it, it doesn't dry very quickly, but I want it to it's got to support its own weight. I don't want to sit here all day holding it. So I'm going to get it roughly in position in position like that see if this glue will hold it it kind of wants to but it's not quite there yet there we go and then this one here There is like a recess in the roof, and I'm not sure where this touches, but I'm going to put some glue on here anyway. Because it will kind of stay there on its own. I just knocked that mirror out. Where did that go? There it is. This is the trouble. You see all those little greeblies everywhere. You've got to be so, so careful. So that's gone in like that. That door is supposed to sit up like that, though. Hmm, that has that's, that door fell off. So that door is supposed to sit up just just past horizontal. Yeah, see this glue doesn't dry very fast at all. I'm gonna put some accelerator on here and then offer this door up like so. I'm hoping that'll be enough. Yeah, see, it doesn't want to... Oh, dear, dear, dear. I've got the glue in the wrong place is the problem. I haven't got enough glue here either, have I? Hopefully, that will now be enough. Yeah, 
Yeah, it doesn't want to stick, does it? Oh, it's such a shame. Why is always these models always such a pain in the ass right at the end? Come on. Oh God, I'm gonna do this with the camera off. Okay, a few swear words later, it's on. So that's all done, I've glued that mirror back in. This door, I've literally stuck on with a piece of double-sided tape. So that can be removed if need be. It will probably fall off on its own. So the last we've got to do now is this antenna. Now it looks like there's bits that go into the fuselage. I'm not going to bother with those. I'm just going to do the length from there to there to there. Okay. Now we've got plenty of choices for this. You can use your old EZ line. I have heard this called EZ line, <laughs> Jason. Um, so you get the fine and the heavy. This is the fine. This is the heavy. Or more readily available, I believe, from places like Premium Hobbies here, where you can use NMB10 and get 10% off. Um, so they're super fine, fine and medium I've got here. So this one's 0 0.055. So um, that's about two thou. So that's absolutely tiny. Um, and then there's this one here, which is fine. That's 0 0.082. So that's about three thou. Okay. So you can see in there, it's very, very fine. Um, open the box and get it out. You can see here it's it's very very fine very fine indeed um, so that's probably the one I'm going to use this one here is the 0.135 which is about five thou five and a half thou for those uh, across the pond it's a bit heavier I think I'm going to use I think I'm going to use this one so I'm going to do this off camera because I need to do it under my magnifier but I'm going to show you basically what I'm going to do if I use my little jig that I've got here in fact if I use the jig to hold the drill. What I'm going to do, I'll have a length of this in my hand and as you can see this stuff is elasticated, okay? It will stretch, the easy line stretches seven times its length but what you want to do is just enough just to take so it sits straight. I've done this on a couple of World War II aircraft and I've pulled it too tight, you know, even just like that and after a couple of years it will actually break the antenna off because it's under constant stress. So it's best not to pull it too tight. So what I will do, I will have this like this in my hand or in a pair of tweezers like so. OK, I will put the accelerator on the end of where it's going to be glued. I will put super glue on the end of the, the line. like so and then if I touch that on the end of that drill it should dry fairly instantly but because this super glue doesn't want to play ball no it's not playing ball but you get the idea and that's how I do it so I'm going to cut that off now because I've glued it so I don't want to use that bit again so that's how I'm going to do it but obviously I need to do it off camera because I can't see what I'm doing because I'm as blind as a bat so I'm just going to cut myself off a length, which is going to be more than long enough. Okay, so that's that's enough there. Okay, so we can put this back in its box and <clears throat> keep it all clean and everything. Avoid getting anything splashed on it. We'll put that jig out of the way. And I'll go on. And what I'm going to do, I'll put the accelerator on here and I'll offer this line up to it. But as I say, I need to do it all under a magnifier. So I'll see you back in there. There we go. As you can see, we've got the the antenna line on there. Now you can probably hardly even see it. But it's there. <laughs> it's there. I've got to get up there along there and down there. So there we are. So that's that on there now. So that is finished. Another one. I think that's seven this year now. It's done. So seven finished or six finished. So, uh, we're doing well at the moment. So I'm um, very happy with that and very happy with the way it looks. Um, it was tedious in the end, I've got to be honest, very, very tedious, but that's me, that's not the kit. I, as you know, I don't like finishing things, so there we go. Um, but there we are, I'll give you a good look at it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'd recommend this model to anyone other than the absolute beginner. Even if you are a beginner, I think you'd manage it all right. Um, but perhaps go for one of the single color schemes. Don't go for this one. And also have a look, as I say, when you first get your kit, have a look at that sprue. If those legs for that winch are broken, sorry, the rotor blades of the way, uh, perhaps do the one without the winch. 
because that was not easy at all getting that done. Um, and there we go. I had problems with sponsors, if you remember. Um, I think that was me. I think maybe there was a slight issue with the, the, the sprues being taken out of the mould too quickly or something. I don't know. But I know that somebody else who's built this, who I've spoken to, said his basically fell together. And as you know, I had to clamp living daylights out of mine to get them to go together. So, so much so I had to take loads of material off the outsides of the wheel bays so that the outsides of the sponsors would actually close up. So, um, yeah, there we go. But there we are. That's her all done and looking dandy. Um, I've just noticed here, I've got some wash on there, which is a bit heavy. So we'll get some thinners in a minute and get that off. Uh, one little tip about wash. If you put your wash in an inverted Tamiya pot like I do here, don't clean it up and throw it away. Just leave it on there. And then when you need some more, just put some um, odorless thinners on there and away it will go. It'll be, it'll be done. It'll be fine. Uh, there may actually be enough odorless thinners left in the... Yeah, there is. I thought there might be enough left in the pipette for me to do this bit here. There we go. Just to remove the excess off of there. There we are. And as you can see, the underside is all done. I know what I've forgotten. I know what I've forgotten. I can hear you all shouting at the screen now. We've got these little lights to go on, haven't we? Let me get them done. And there we go. We've got the we've got the light on there, and we've got the light underneath there with the, in the clear red. So they finish it off nicely. So there we go. That is this girl done. We can cut the box up and throw it away. All done. So there we are. So I'm afraid I'm not doing any um, pictures or anything with music at the end because if I put copyright free music on there, I get a copyright strike, um, <laughs> which is unbelievable. And I'm not paying £128 a year, whatever they want for Episound anymore. So that's that. Um, so there we go. There she is. All done. You can have a look now. You can freeze frame make your own little gallery up but uh, on the whole it's gone together a dream it's a beautiful kit I'd recommend it to anyone as I said the decals are a dream um, and really that there's no major issue with it at all as I say when you get your kit check it there have been talk of clear parts uh, being foggy um, short shots and decals are register so have a look at those things on your kit before you carry on. If you do have any problems, just get in touch with Airfix. They will sort you out like that. They're a friendly bunch and um, they know they know that they are going to have issues. Like every kit manufacturer does, I guess. So they just deal with the problems and sort you out like that. On any Airfix kit you buy, that is not just this one. So there we are. That's her all done. And... Uh, and we can put her on the shelf with the rest of the models all over the house. I keep getting asked, Nigel, where do you store all your models? All over the house is basically the answer. Um, I don't have one particular cabinet or anything. I keep them in there. Anywhere I can find a horizontal surface. And eventually they just go in the bin. So um, that's where they are. So uh, yeah, that's that question answered for you before you ask. And no, I won't do a video around my house of all my completed models because I don't basically want to take a camera around my house and show the world where I live. So um, there we go. So that's that. Right. So what we're going to pick up next, I don't know. I think it's probably going to be the A20. I do want to get into that Avro Anson though, but uh, we shall see. I think it's probably going to be the A20 because I've had that long enough and I've got loads of aftermarket for it. So uh, there we are. But that's the um, that's the Sea King. Highly recommended. Beautiful kit. Goes together a dream. Difficult to finish for me because it was so finicky, but. Um, there we go. I still don't know the colour of that hub. Um, somebody has told me it's blue, uh, which I can well believe because the, the rotor head is like a navy blue colour, so that makes sense. But that same person said that the blade should be the same colour top and bottom. And I think I've seen a picture that shows them darker on the top than the bottom. Um, they also said the undercarriage and bay should be white. Well, I've got lots of pictures that show them as being that colour. So I don't know, you know... I think I, I know that if you look at the one on the box front, that one certainly has got white undercarriage bays and white undercarriage legs. So they obviously changed at some point. But um, there we go. So we're calling that a done thing, other than that upper hub, which you can't even really see. 
so uh, thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed it and um perhaps put your put in the comments down below what you'd like to see next i think it's going to be the a20 is going to be up next but uh, we need to get the scammon and the chieftain finished as well don't we and we need to get that lancaster done we need to get that lancaster done but as i say i always say i only work on models especially big ones like that when my heart's in it because if your heart's not in it you get mis you make mistakes and get stuff wrong so there we are i'll see you all soon bye for now